everybody, Dr. Rick here. Uh, sitting here, don't even have all the lighting and everything set up for the videos, but I'm sitting here and uh, just got off the phone and I was talking about something. And it was something I wasn't going to weigh in on uh, uh, solely because of what it was tied to the NFL. And, you know, I'm just pretty much tired of talking about it. But again, there's something, there's a learning opportunity, a teaching opportunity. There's something there to talk about. Um, in case you don't know, and it's not just the NFL, it's the NBA and it's the entire situation. So I got to be very careful how I talk about this and how I phrase this because the censors and, and all that are in full effect. But everybody knows that uh, Kyrie Irving has taken a, a social beating for his decision uh, not to get poked. Uh, and there's a reason I'm using the terminology I'm using uh, for his decision not to get poked. And he has stood his ground. He has remained firm. He has given his explanation. And whether or not you agree with it, you have to respect it because he's standing on his principles. He's standing on what he believes. And he has said that he doesn't feel comfortable uh, putting that in his body. That's his decision. That's actually his right, uh, despite what. Uh, many people think that's his right, his decision. Now, obviously, when you make those choices and decisions, you have to live with the consequences. The consequences to this point have been that he has not been able to play. Um, I think that uh, from what I've heard um, through the channels that have uh, that I have tapped into, that he's already prepared. He He's up and all the way uh, prepared to go to simply walking away from basketball before he is pressured into doing something that he does not want to do. Uh, I think he's setting a standard of what we should be looking for and looking and seeing in in ourselves, not just from professional, from the perspective of a professional athlete, but as men and women, we need to make choices based off of what we believe based off of what we've done our due diligence to discover and it goes far beyond the poke but that's that thing here is where it really gets interesting in the nfl there are similar rules and guidelines that mandate and dictate uh how those who are vaccinated and those who aren't vaccinated will be handled uh aaron Rodgers, who in some instances have been uh, has been the face of the league, one of the most recognized faces, all of the uh, State Farm commercials and everything else, a few MVPs, a Super Bowl ring, and a bunch of other things at one point considered the best quarterback in the league, I, la, la, blah, blah, all that good stuff. And so what he does is he goes off and he tries to hire uh, a medical practice to say that what he is doing is working to build up his antibodies against the virus without actually taking it but he gave the he gave the uh idea he allowed the idea to be sent out uh that he was actually vaccinated so he was very deceptive and to the public and to the league until he came down with it and then it became known that he hadn't actually been vaccinated he was i mean even to the point where he was sitting up saying you know uh i'm i'm uh he didn't use the word vaccine he says i am uh immunized i'm immunized is the word he used and he says but i don't hold anything against people who aren't well the thing is they wanted the, the poke, not just to say you've been immunized, but specifically by those particular uh, brands of, uh, of the shot that you can get. And he decided that he was going to forego that, which, again, is his right to do. And if he'd have been honest about it and stood up about it, then you could sit up and say, hey, man, I ride with that. But he decided not to. He lied and got caught. And they're trying to determine... Uh, what's going to happen? Well, we know right now that the league is not going to suspend him. And obviously he's missed some games because he has COVID, but he could be back as early as this weekend for the next game. Okay, but he's not going to be suspended. It's not going to cost the team any 
uh, type of penalties for us, draft picks or anything like that, but it could if they don't tighten down on their protocol. And if Aaron is deciding that he's not going to get poked, then he's going to have to uh, follow the protocols of those who don't get poked. And they are different. They're more restrictive. And, you know, I mean, dude, out partying, he everywhere. And, again, you know, there's a lot of opinions about, you know, whether or not, you know, this or that. It changes anything, but that's not the point. You're not operating in an environment like me, myself. I operate my business so I can control my environment. I operate what goes on at the home so I can get, again, I can control my environment. So I don't have anybody that I have to report to. I have to respect my wife and family. I would never put them at harm. But there are no protocols that govern me that I've, you know, that I'm ignoring and putting people at risk and putting the entire team at risk. Uh, whether, you know, and again, this is this isn't going into the legitimacy of the claims about anything, you know, the poke or not the poke. This is simply talking about uh, how things are handled. Now, I brought all this to your attention to make this point. Kyrie getting drugged. He's honest. Comes out and says, "Look, I'm not doing it, uh, and I'll 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 deal with the consequences." So Kyrie's being honest. On the other hand, Aaron Rodgers is literally being deceptive. Let's just call it what it is: lying. And he he it, but look at how the media is covering it. That's the part I want to talk about. Look at how the media is covering it. And I'm saying that for a reason because you can have a black man. Be honest, upfront, straightforward, and come out and say, hey, look, I'm going to exercise my right to make a decision that I feel is in my best interest. And he's drugged for it. I mean, and you got a bunch of us dragging him too, just dragging him. But the media is like, like and, and, and I don't specifically that chump Stephen A. Smith, just Kyrie Irving needs to be traded. Kyrie Irving is destroying his team. Kyrie Irving is all that because Kyrie Irving is being selfish. Kyrie just constantly going at him, constantly going at him, constantly going at him. And, you know, everybody's, from a media perspective, applying pressure on Kyrie and with, with the hopes of breaking Kyrie and getting Kyrie to do that. And I really, truly hope that he does not fold because there's so much more uh, riding on this outside of sports and everything like that. But, again, it's his choice. It's his, it's his decision. I just hope whatever decision he makes, it's because he feels it's his best choice, not because of the pressure, not because of the media, not because of anything. But the same media, starting with Stephen A. Smith, giving dude Aaron Rodgers a pass. Uh, it really rubs me raw when it's one of us that wants to rape I mean, rake our brothers over the coal and then turn to a white man and, and start making excuses for him doing something actually worse. It's not even the same thing. It's worse. Uh, Kyrie Irving straightforward. You know where he is. You know where he stands. You know that he hasn't gotten poked. Aaron Rodgers, you, Ro, Aaron Rodgers, you think he's been poked, but he hasn't been poked. He just lied to you. And then he's out here, you know, running game, you know, like like he's part of the the you know, the, the, the poke demographic, and you're actually the unpoked demographic. And then you're sitting up, and now you're in a situation where you can cost your teammates money. Because what happens is if they have to forfeit a game because uh, too many people end up, it, it, it starts to break out on the team. Everybody involved on the team loses money. But check this out. The team that they were supposed to play, they don't get paid either. Now, there's a whole bunch of politics and BS that goes along with that. I'm not even saying I agree with the mandates. I don't. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is those are the rules. So if you're not going to buy by the rules, you sit up and say, I'm not going to do it. And so this is what I'm going to do. If I'm not going to do it, then these are the things you have to do to continue to play. Okay, I'll do that, but I'm not going to. I'm not going. I'm, I'm not going to get poked. Okay, then you live by that. But he, what he wanted to do is live freely and do what he wanted to do, as if he had uh, complied with the the, the uh, mandate, and then put people at risk, not just with their health, but with their money. And of course, 
him missing a few days or missing a game check is no big deal. He's one of the highest paid players in the league. But you got some players on that league that are on uh, minimum uh, contracts or whatever the situation, uh, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you got rookie contracts, you got veteran minimums, and a bunch of other stuff that doesn't even come close to what he makes. So a game check to them is a little bit more significant, and it's their money. They have a right. They show up. To, they show up. They're ready to. They're ready to uh, produce. They're ready to put a product on the field. Uh, they should not be stopped from that by someone who is skirting the system. Again, this is not about whether or not the mandate is right or wrong it's about it's in place and if you're going to move move with integrity within it and say no i'm not going to do it or yes i'm going to comply and then do exactly what you say you're going to do but 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 again that's not the big issue with me the big issue with me is how everyone else is handling him he's basically told the world kiss his ass is what he's actually said. He's like, you know, hey, look, I don't give a damn about either side. One side is going to fry me. The other side is going to praise me, but I don't give a damn. Basically, his words paraphrased. So, but what gets me is the system that allows him to have that perspective. That one kid can sit up and just say, look, you know, I'm not feeling it. I don't, I, I, I don't feel comfortable with it. This is something significant to me. This is my entire future, and I don't see it, so I'm not going to do it. And then you say, okay, I get it. And he's willing to live with the consequences, and he's getting drugged for it. I mean, just constant assault. Everybody's talking like, like he's, you know, murdered somebody. Whereas in this guy sits up and lies, you know, tries to pull the wool over everybody's eyes, and then in his foolishness actually comes down with it and now is exposed and he still gets a pass. But they'll tell you that white privilege doesn't exist. They'll tell you that there is no uh, weighted scale. And it is. That there is no bias, but it is. And it's in the media and it's perpetuated and it's almost automatic. And, you know, my thing is, until we truly come to a point where we are ready to do something on our own, where we, where, where we, where we are ready to take our talents, our, val our, our, our assets, what we have that is valuable to them that will make them want to pay you $10 million, $13 million, $14 million a year and up, there's some value there. You don't just get that money because you're athletic you get that money because your athleticism has value your skill set has value you're able to put a product on the floor of the court the field uh that is capable of producing mass amounts of money for some very wealthy people what you need to be focusing on is how you can parlay that value into something you control that way you can stand on your own speak on your own move on your own operate within rules that you and your peers come up with outside of having some 70 year old billionaire tell you what you can and cannot do and talk to you like you're a kid and that is my whole thing is we've got to be able to devise plans and strategies that absolutely focus and uh, on developing what we need as a collective and as in individuals to operate within our own sphere and our own power with our own value system and our own valued assets to create our own space. We're selling ourselves a penny on the dollar because the type of pennies we get and most people don't have. But we're getting, we getting bamboozled, uh, we're getting conned, and we're getting manhandled on top of it. So here's my thing. I think that we need to pay attention to it. You know, if you like me, is you know, you're not emotionally invested in the league anyway, but I am emotionally invested in the narratives because the narratives impact my people. So I'm invested in how uh, the media is treating Kyrie. I'm invested in how uh, people are going to read this. I'm invested in how uh, they're protecting the deceptive one. I'm invested in it because my people are impacted by it. 
not for some sport or some brand, but because there's a bigger issue at hand. When we learn that there's so much going on than what we see on the surface and that we need to be paying attention and thinking critically, we're going to make mass, mass, massive uh, progress, progressive moves because we're going to be able to see that the things we're dismissing as insignificant and inconsequential are actually highly significant and have ma major impact on what we want to do and how we want to do it and how quickly we can do it. But we've got to pay attention. We've got to start building. I'm going to go ahead and drop it at that. We need to start building. Speaking of building, we need your support. Show some love. Go into the description box and look at the ways that you can support the work we do at The Odyssey Project. And let's make something happen. And, man, uh, I'm leaving alone. I'm just thinking about just how much of a piece of crap Stephen A. is. You know, everybody's a lot of opinion, but when you could just watch the pattern of how he handles his own people versus how he deals with them and how much they pay him to do it. It's crazy, man. You can sell yourself out. It's so much value. Trust me. I know. I've seen I've seen opportunities. It's so much it's so easy to jump over to that side and let them use you and pay you well. This is, he's not the only one. Steve Harvey is a bunch of them over there getting paid to malign and, and, and misdirect and misgive. Uh, we need to hold them all accountable. But on that note, look, I'm about to get out of here again. Show your love and support. Support the work we're doing. Talk to you guys soon. So that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.